For millennia, the questions have been there. How can the poor be lifted? How can the hungry be fed? With all the efforts to fight poverty, why is it still so prevalent in the world? Many wonder if there are even answers to these questions. Yet wherever we turn, there they are, staring back at us. What can we do? What can I do? I thought that the poor in developing countries probably lacked work ethic. They, they didn't try hard enough. You know, if they would just put their shoulder to the wheel and, and try a little harder and maybe wake up a little earlier and just, just go for it, that they'd have a better life. Well, shame on me. These people work incredibly hard. They have to, because if they don't, their babies starve and people die and life stops. There is no safety net that will catch them if they fall. What the poor lack is opportunity. They don't lack motivation, they don't lack drive, they don't lack ability, they lack opportunity. There are millions and millions and millions of poor people around the world who have no access to financial services. And the faster that we are able to get those to them, the better. This urgent need to help the poor is exactly why Unitas was created. In the early 1970s, an answer to the question of poverty began to surface in different parts of the world. Perhaps not the solution, but a solution. It was a method of helping the poor to help themselves. An idea so simple that many were asking why it hadn't been tried before. It wasn't a welfare handout or another food program. It was giving the poor something that we take for granted and had been reluctant to give in the past credit, access to financial capital that would allow the poor to start small businesses or grow those they already had. Not a gift, but a loan, to be repaid with interest. Eventually, a new term would enter the economic lexicon, microfinance. Organizations from Bolivia to Bangladesh began making small or micro loans, usually between 50 and 150 dollars. The recipient would use the loan as capital in a small business, then pay it back at a competitive interest rate. The results broke all conventional thinking. Not only did these borrowers grow their businesses and increase their incomes, but they repaid their loans on time, with repayment rates well above those at traditional banks. The very first loan was $35, which I gave to a woman who sold goat cheese in the market. She came and said, I like a $35 loan. And I said, $35, what are you going to do with that? She said, oh, I want to buy a thermometer. So I scratched my head again, the $35 thermometer, why is it so expensive and, and how is it going to help you make money? She said, well, I sell goat cheese in the market. And pasteurized goat cheese sells for almost twice as much as unpasteurized cheese. So I need this special $35 thermometer so I can pasteurize my cheese, uh, my milk, and sell pasteurized cheese. I said, done, here's the loan. So she did it, started paying her loan back, and a few weeks later I was talking to her. I said, now you're making all this extra money. What are you going to do with it? She said, oh, I know exactly what I'm going to do. In August, when school starts, I'm going to buy the school uniform, which I haven't been able to afford, buy the school books, which I haven't been able to afford, and pay the bus fare, which I haven't been able to afford, to send my first child ever to school. My mouth dropped for $35. This family had changed its life. Instead of cycling downward in a cycle of poverty, now this child would start a cycle upward. And I was convinced. It appeals to me that the fundamental idea that the human spirit exists everywhere in the world, and whether you're rich or poor, that, that you know, poor people can employ their spirit and their sweat and their own you know, effort to improve their economic status. And that seems to me a pretty good way to, to alleviate poverty. Vadla Bagyama raises water buffalo. Starting at four each morning, she milks them, then sells the milk in the village. Until several years ago, she was living hand to mouth. When she or her husband had work, they ate. When they didn't, they and their son went hungry. In 2000, she learned of a new organization in her village that was giving out small loans to poor women like her. After a week of training, Bagyama took out her first loan of $100. With it, she bought a buffalo. Buffalo milk is a dietary staple in India, and she hoped she could sell it, pay back her loan plus interest, and still have enough for her family's needs. 
Four years later, Bagyama owns six buffalo, and the milk is selling well. Her daily income has increased by 380%. Being able to feed and clothe her family is no longer a concern for Bagyama. She looks to the future with hope. Today, microfinance organizations across the globe are giving microcredit loans to millions of families in the poorest nations. Most of the loans go to women who have proven to be uniquely qualified at growing their businesses, paying back their loans, and investing their profits into the health and education of their families. Repayment rates are extremely high, better than 95% across the industry, which allows those monies to be loaned out again to other micro-entrepreneurs. If I lend you money and you repay it, and I'm in a position to relend it, which is what microfinance is about, it will help you and then the next person and the next person and the next person. And it grows because you're, you're expected to repay it with some form of interest. So it's the gift that keeps on giving. It's not charitable in the sense that it's you know, a rich person giving a poor person money. Uh, it's, a, it's a way for poor people to get access to the same economic system that the rest of us have uh, and to improve their lives. This is happening right now. This isn't some theoretical concept that we're talking about that's going to take 10 years and we'll check back in 10 years to see if it's making a difference. You check back in two weeks and you see that's already made a difference. The microfinance has demonstrated its impact to change people's lives. It's demonstrated around the world the ability to help families begin to work their way out of poverty. Vadla Bagyama with her buffalo business is a client of SKS. To date, she has repaid in full all of her loans amounting to more than $600. With the profits, she and her husband built a cement water container in their house to store clean water, dramatically decreasing sickness in their family. They also have savings set aside for medical or other emergencies. With her most recent loan, Bagyama decided to diversify. She purchased a sewing machine and does mending for hire. With this additional income, she is able to send her son to school. He is the first in her family to learn to read and write. Bagyama's story is typical of the many thousands of clients that SKS serves. Poverty is so big that it requires all of us to somehow decide, yeah, I want to be involved in it. For most of us, we've never known how to do it because we're sitting in our family rooms or, or at our desks and the problem is so far away that we really don't know how to get a handle on it. I think what we're doing with the Unitas is providing a logical, reasonable, and, and actionable way of doing it right now. The success of the microfinance movement in lifting millions of the world's poor out of poverty has given rise once again to the age-old questions. What can we do? What can I do? And finally, could poverty actually be eliminated? Look when uh, Wright brothers flew their plane for the first time. It stayed in the air for 20 seconds and came back on the land again. And it covered 120 feet. At that time, you say, ah, so what? We could have said that. But it changed the world. For the first time, human being flew. We are just the Wright Brothers play. We are covering only 120 feet. I've seen it alleviated in one family, and in 10 families, and in 1,000 families, and in 100,000 families. So I know on an individual basis, absolute poverty can be alleviated. The question of can it be alleviated globally becomes, I think, more one of our will. Do we have the will to alleviate it globally?